Hi, I'm Kelly Ellis, Vice President of Global Industry Relations for Renati, here with Mark Hill, Co-Director of the UK and EU for Renati. And he's not only my colleague, but you might know him from BBC's Antiques Roadshow, which is currently filming, I cannot believe it, it's a 43rd series. It's true, 43 series of the Antiques Roadshow, literally thousands of objects filmed, hundreds of thousands of people seen, and of course what I love particularly is thousands of stories listened to and understood and explored. And I think there always is a story behind an object, which is why it's, it's so great to be looking at these wonderful objects at the compound. And we're partnered with the compound at Round Top Antiques Fair. They are so excited. We are so excited. They will be having their upcoming fair October 17th through the 31st. And we found some goodies to showcase. Let's get started. So although I work on the roadshow, um, on the miscellaneous table, so I, I deal with everything all the way from the sort of 18th century to the 21st century, I'm a 20th century boy at heart, Kelly, I really am. And at the heart of 20th century design, we find Scandinavian modernism. And I've picked what I believe to be a really rare icon of 20th century Scandinavian modern design. Um, and it is the CH34 chair designed by um, Hans Wegner, a very famous Danish designer, and produced by Carl Hansen of Denmark. And I just think this really sums up so much that one finds at the root of Scandinavian modernism, which lies in nature. So you have that wonderful carved teak with the grain and those beautiful curving lines. Indeed, this chair is all about curves. See how the legs curve outwards and then back inwards. This chair is known as the yoke, and I think it's pretty easy to see why it's known as the yoke from the back and the arms, you see? I do, and you know, sometimes I'm not really sure why they name things they do, but this is very, very clear. I love the obvious. And actually it has a practical function as well. So it's not just decorative with those nice little metal roundels there. It does mean that you can sort of twist and turn the back. So you can settle in it and find exactly the right position for comfort for it. And so many of Wegener's designs, indeed so many 20th century designs, were all about comfort. So there's a lot going on here. Scandinavian modernism, fantastic quality, great designers. I think it's a really superb piece. It's gorgeous. They say that the sort of heart of home is on the hearth and around the hearth you would find a fireplace and how magnificent would this piece look sitting smack bang in the middle of your fireplace. It was produced in the 19th century, maybe the late 19th century, um, in the Black Forest area of southwestern Germany which was well known for its wood carvings. The quality is fabulous and look at the way that it literally looks like it's it's caught in a moment in time as it stands up and it reminds me of Sir Edwin Lanzier's painting The Monarch of the Glen painted in the same period this might have been produced during the mid-19th century. There is the sort of majesty as this beast stands up to look and survey the landscape surrounding it. The fine details are absolutely stunning. It would be something that I would be absolutely okay with a client wanting to put something so uh, Americana, wild, wild west that I love. I really do. Uh, we, we kind of at least have one item like this in all of our homes in the States. And so I know these are very highly sought after pieces. It's beautiful. I mean, just think of the work that went into that piece. One block of wood was sculpted back to produce these, these elements which were assembled to produce the clock itself. It, it, it's a stunning example of the quality that you would find in the Black Forest. You know, I'm fascinated by bits of furniture that sort of fall out of fashion and favour, but we actually still sort of need. Now, people say that printing is dead and no one reads books or magazines anymore. Absolute rubbish. Yes, there might not be as many magazines around, but it's still something we want to buy and just sort of lose ourselves in wonderful imagery and fabulous stories. What do you do when you've finished reading it and you put it back down after your browse and sort of journey through? Well, you put it in the magazine rack, of course. And actually, what better magazine rack than this fabulously stylish piece. It's formed in a, in, in a brass metal or a brass coloured metal. So there's a sort of brightness and lightness to it. And I think elegance is what this piece is about. It's a very simple style. And I love the way that it's formed out of a um, of, of faux bamboo. So the metal is made to look like bamboo rods. And the other thing that I love about that faux bamboo um, style is that it, it links back to Regency design. So we start to see faux bamboo coming out in, in the Regency period in Britain. Uh, so we're linking across the centuries, producing something that is quintessentially 20th century, a magazine rack 
um, but something I still think, regardless of what people say, would still look great and be useful in the home today. It's just enough gold and enough uh, little shine to sort of break things up because one of the elements that um, designers love to do is mix the materials. So you've got something upholstered, you've got something iron, you've got something metal, you've got something glass. You want to mix up all of those elements and this it's it's perfect. This would be something that I would snatch up in a, in a heartbeat and just have, you know, in my warehouse to be able to put into a client's home to actually add that little touch because when you are looking and you want something small but perfect and useful, check, check, check right? So it's not just something that's just sitting there. It's got, it's got form and function and it's cool. It's real. I really love it. So I'm a great wearer of brooches and pins and believe me, Kelly, boys can wear brooches. And if you don't believe me, I'll wear one for our next video and you'll see what I mean. I would love to wear this particular piece. So of course we have that circular design, but the closer you look, you look the more you actually see. So although at first they look a little like flowers, these diamond elements, the closer you look, you realize they're actually dragonflies between those inset blue aquamarines there. So there's a lot going on in, in the design. The sparkle factor is off the scale. And of course, that's what you'd expect from a name such as Tiffany, who made this. Tiffany have been known for decades for producing the very best pieces using the very best quality materials. And it's not just the best quality materials, it's the best quality manufacture and craftsmanship. Turn it over and you'll see that the way the setting has been done is open. So that allows light to come into the stones to really allow them to sparkle from behind. It's a superb and scintillating piece. And I think anybody wearing it would be, quite frankly, the belle of the ball. And everything that I'm attracted to, and I've seen a lot of times when you and I have, are looking at different jewelry, um, at different fairs, and we're talking about vintage pieces, we both are very drawn to that circle shape. You know what? I also like it because certainly if I wear one, or if you wear one on a jacket that um, has, has, has a collar, effectively, you've got a lot of very hard lines. So you've got the angle of the lapel and the collar and the line coming down here. And the, I think the circle just breaks up those very harsh lines of a, of a lapel. I think that you're 100% correct. And to your point, it is very unisex because of that. You know, it is, it's not, it doesn't have the free edge and it, it just has a different contained classic style. I just want to mention that this is mounted in platinum. Now platinum is different from white gold, it's many times rarer. Did you know that if you took all the platinum that had been mined ever in the entire world, it would probably only just about manage to fill the average sized living room? It's rare <gasps> stuff. I had no idea. See, this is why we are so lucky to have you. I love information like that. Thank you so much. What do we have next? You know, I think we all need to allot just a tiny little bit of space for something sort of quirky and characterful and dare I say cool. And I think this, this wonderful sterling silver tea caddy in the shape of a monkey is all of those things. It's also fabulous quality. So it was made by Ludwig Neresheimer um, of Hanau in Germany, probably around the uh, late 1890s, 1900, which is a relatively late date for tea caddies. I mean, when we think of tea caddies, we think of the introduction of tea, the tea ceremony, the luxury of tea, and also the expense of tea. It's a superb quality piece. I mean, look at the face. You can see the character there. You can see, dare I say it, even emotion in that. Then move down to the, the, the form of the body itself, which is perfectly proportioned. And also all that detail in the chasing of the hair and the toes. And then holding this little ball here. I think it really is the most wonderful piece. And the head, of course, would flip back to allow you to access the tea inside. So it's marked 800, which is a standard mark that you would find in Germany for solid silver at the time. I think in America you often use the word sterling but over there they use 800 which means 800 parts of, of pure silver in the metal that went to make the piece. It really is beautiful, fun and you know what like every good antique or, or vintage or collectible it makes me smile. I really love this piece and to your point there is so much emotion in the face. It almost looks like he really needs a cup of tea is really what I think. <laughs> When I look at it, I think I totally relate. He looks a little tired, 
but so much detail in the face. It is, I, I think if you're going to have something that's function, again, we talked about, you know, form and function and, and design. If you're going to have something that's functional, make it cool, make it interesting, make it something that's different because you are going to see this. This is something that's sitting on top of your countertops. This is something that is an eyesight all the time. And so I love when you can fill your space with things that are interesting and also have the function that you need. And this little face is adorable and definitely needs a cup of tea. <laughs> Chinese culture, the monkey symbolizes cleverness. And I think this would be a very clever purchase for all the reasons that we've discussed. Thank you so much again for bringing these beautiful pieces, interesting picks, um, highlighting the compound at Round Top Antiques Fair. That is it from myself and Mark Hill, and we will see you next time. Thank you.